For example, too, we want to evaluate something that uses the new symbol we just learned about, definite integral. So we want to evaluate the definite integral from 0 to 3 of, here's our function, x cubed minus 6x dx. And I usually read this dx as with respect to x. It tells us what the variable is inside of the integral symbol. All right, and the way that I evaluate it is by recognizing that this is the limit of a Riemann sum. Uh, so the process is going to be very similar to what we did in this previous example, example one. We just have a new notation in order to write the whole entire thing. Okay, so we started the other one with a graph, and uh, I got you covered. Here it is. And notice that we do have a part that is down below here. Of course, this part is going to cancel out with some of the stuff that's over here. And it also looks like there's more below the x-axis than this above the x-axis, which should give us the expectation that probably our answer, final answer, is going to be overall negative as far as that net area is concerned. All right, so let's start this process, maybe sketch some rectangles in here, come up with the width of our rectangles. Speaking of, hey, let's go ahead and do that. So our delta x, regular partition-wise, would be equal to... Uh, we're going from 0 to 3. This is our A, this is our B. So our interval here is the closed interval from 0 to 3. Okay, so I'll do 3 minus 0 over N. Wow, it's exactly the same as before, right? Okay, let's throw some rectangles in here. Using the right endpoint, maybe not draw all of them, just enough. Just enough to get the point. Right, okay, so this first one, wow, this is going to be exactly like the first one. A 3 over n, then a 6 over n, and a 9 over n, and so on. So we are just taking multiples of 3, where this is i equals 1, i equals 2, and i equals 3, which means that our heights will be f of 3i over n, uh, just like it was before. All right, let's rewrite then this definite integral as a limit of a Riemann sum with all of our new information here. So the definite integral from 0 to 3 of x cubed, clean this up, cubed minus 6x dx is equal to the limit, and I'm going to use the notation probably exclusively as n goes to infinity. It's a heck of a lot easier to write than the other ones summation from i equals 1 to n, and then we need a couple of things inside here. We need our Riemann sum, which is a product of heights and widths, f of 3i over n times our delta x, which is 3 over n. So this is the kind of thing that if you see a limit of a Riemann sum on the AP exam is that you want to recognize that it is a definite integral that you're linking these two things together in the same exact way that we did for derivatives. The limit uh, definition of a derivative, I would never want to actually evaluate it by hand. Instead, I want to pick out what the function is and then just take the derivative with our derivative shortcuts. I'm going to ultimately do the same thing on this type of equation of this type of problem after we learn the tricks involved in shortening this process. But we don't know those tricks yet, so we'll just have to do it the long way. Yay. All right, so we will, as we did before, we can take the 3 over n out of the summation and evaluate this 3i over n and our function, which is that x cubed minus 6 times x limit summation and oh wait before i do the summation let's pull out our three over n as we did before okay summation uh three i over n which we're going to cube this time minus six times three over n okay keep going with your simplification process three over n summation uh 27 i cubed over n cubed minus 18 over n. And then we would break up each one of these little individual sums. I'm really hoping, 
I'm really hoping that this is not going to be the case where we learn like some sort of shortcut that is going to like lessen all the time that we take on this process, because I don't know about you, but it is really enjoyable. All right, so I'm going to take this 27 over n cubed out of this first summation. 27 over n cubed, our sum of i cubes. Minus, we'll take the... Am I missing something? Nobody spoke up. There was supposed to be an i up in here. So I'll take the 18 over n out of that one, of course. Okay. Okay. Who remembers their sum of cubes? Nobody? Okay, look it up for me. Limit n goes to infinity. n goes to n. Brilliant. 3 over n. Boop, boop, boop. 27 over n cubed. I want to say that it was, it was very strange in that it's the square of the sum of the integers, which is n squared n plus 1 squared over 2 squared 4 minus 18 over n times n times n plus 1 over 2. All right, clean it up some more. Uh, lot, for example, two of those with leaving just an n there. Those cancel. That leaves a 9 up there. And then distribute also the... Oh, just a second. There's an alarm going off. It's an emergency. Uh, I want to distribute the 3 over n through all of that stuff. And then finally take the limit. Uh, let's see. 27 times 3 is 81? Yeah. 81. Nothing's going to cancel. 81 n plus 1 squared over 4 n times this n, n squared. That's a mess. There, that's better. Minus, and then this 9 is going to stay, but it's going to multiply times 3, so it's 27. n plus 1 over n. And then we are ready to take the limit of each of these little pieces here. Um, so this is going to be squared, and that's squared. So we just want the ratio of the coefficients, which is just 81 over 4. Okay, and then once again, that's to the first power, first power, so it's just the ratio of the coefficients here, which is just minus 27. Safe stoppable, of course. But uh, let's see, we can get a common denominator, which is going to be a 4. 4 times 27, that'd be 80. 80 plus 100 and 108. So one, eight, mm, 81 over 4 minus 108 over 4, and then we can definitely see we are going to get a negative answer, meaning that there was, in fact, more on the bottom than on the top. 81 minus 108 gives me, I do believe, negative 27 over 4. Box it. Man, that was a lot of work. We want to make sure that we save our answer here. So uh, recap this thing here because the video is not long enough. All right, so we did... Expect there to be more area on the bottom than we did on the top, and we definitely got that because we got an overall negative answer to our definite integral. We evaluated that definite integral by first rewriting it as a limit of a Riemann sum and then going through the non-tedious process of actually evaluating that Riemann, limit of the Riemann sum, yes.